You're listening to the Teak Nation Podcast, where we strive to educate, inspire, and entertain you with tips and lessons from frauders and friends of TKE. Hello, Teak Nation Podcast listeners. My name is Alex Swinson. Donnie Aldrich is here. How are you today, Al? We're into December, my man. We're in the Christmas season. You're a big, you love the Christmas season. Yeah, it's pretty gray is the problem. And I don't I don't see any snow in the forecast pre-Christmas, which... Well, here's the good news. Me. It concerns you, me. You know this, and I'm sure the listeners are really excited to hear about some Indiana weather, is that it was, what, 60 degrees about 36 hours ago? And uh-huh. it's going it, to... The temperature is going to rise 10 degrees each day, if you notice. So today, the high, I think, is 28. Tomorrow, 38. 48 by the time we get to friday my man 58 degrees living in it that is uh that is some mid-december golf weather right there i mean how often how often do we get that uh yeah i do i actually really like the winter which i know you hate the winter little yin and yang situation uh I, I, I like the winter. I do like the snow, at least for a period of time. What I do not like, which is which is where we've been, is when it's 37 degrees and raining with 20 mile an hour sustained winds. That is the part of winter, I, which if there's any psychopath out there who likes that version of winter, let me know. But it's been it's been a pretty uneventful winter so far. Hopefully she picks up. Well, reason 897 why I don't like winter is that it's dark at about 430. So, yep, that's it's always true. great. It's always great when it's six o'clock and it feels like it's 10. Right. That's always great. Seasonal depressive disorder. It is real. And uh, I encourage our listeners to seek help if you are experiencing the symptoms, which is basically just being sad because it's dark all the time, which uh, I mean, I kind of am. So uh, I don't know, maybe I need to, maybe I need to talk to someone about it. Anyway, uh, this is the Teak Nation podcast, and we are so glad that you have elected to join us. This will be our final episode of 2021, a journey that started uh, about 11 months ago with Brian Duffy, season two of the Teak Nation podcast, new format, new faces, new friends. And uh, I don't know if I can say for certain that the journey has concluded, but it is at least headed toward a hiatus. And I don't know, I haven't processed my feelings on it just yet. Have you? Well, season two has been a great ride. It's been, you think about this year, we started the first half of the year, essentially in our universe with university still being locked down and much of the country still being locked down as we went into summer. And then we came into the fall where things are for the most part, as long as you're vaccinated, full systems go on most of our campuses. And so yeah. it's essentially still, like we've lived in two two different realities uh, over the last 12 months. We were still home office when season two started. Oh, absolutely. Way home off. Man, gosh. I In some ways, the last year feels like it took about 45 seconds. And in other ways, it took sl- it feels yeah. like feels like it's been as long since Dece- or January as it has been since I graduated college. So I mean, we started um, we we started the year and you lived within six hours of the office and now you drive eight hours home every day, which is kind of back like, and cool forth. Back and forth. Yeah, it's a, it's a killer on the gas tank, but these are the sacrifices we make. Uh, I think in the pantheon of season twos, this is right up there with the with the successions in the Game of Thrones. This is. Uh, this has been a really solid season two. I think you look at shows maybe like Ozark or Stranger Things that did not bring it as hard in season two. There's always Netflix gets in these gets in these lulls where they create a show. It's insanely popular. Everyone loves it. And then they're like, oh, shit, we have to make a second season. What are we going to do? Pardon my language. And this in, in the season two falls a bit flat as as it did in the examples I just shared. Right. Well, a lot of this can come down to a lot of this can come down to obviously content and some of the guest stars that you have. You're talking about a season two with Brian Duffy as a kickoff. You got Woody Woodcock, Jason Galia, Brian Keller. Man, I uh, we brought that. in we brought in Tyler yeah. Sally, Jed Collins, Old Joe from from VaynerMedia, Charlie Reagan, Heather Green. Edwin Robinson. I mean, the list goes on and on. Barry Atlin. I could go all day. Oh, Pat does, McElroy. You, you literally could go all day. Yeah. Mark Vucevic. Talked about golf. Well, well, Andrew Hughes. 
that's what I want to that's what I want to get into because we we don't actually have a guest for the final episode here. Maybe you thought there'd be some grand finale. Maybe Aaron Rodgers. Maybe Phil Sims. Maybe Mark Benioff. None of those guys were even interested in taking a call to join the Team Nation podcast. But what we can do is we can do a little we can do a little year in review. And in of the podcasts that I listen to, this is not uncommon. So I stole this as not original content, but. I wanted to look back a little bit on on season two and think about a how far we've come b the uh, significant environments that we have operated within and then c maybe maybe look at where we're going which I think we we're not sure yet it is truly the great unknown but uh, we can have a conversation around it when we when we think about some of our favorite moments of season two where does your mind go immediately favorite moments on the fight we'll get into the the guests and the interviews but just snapshot in time reliving the last year what 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 moments have you enjoyed the most being a part of this program i really enjoyed the live broadcast piece we did at leadership academy we had oh, some fun with that. yeah we had some fun one. with that that was uh, it was entertaining for the folks out there listening they couldn't see the line that existed of folks just one oh. after another and how you you cycled them in i think anytime that you have conversations with extremely energetic and dynamic folks and we had so many but especially you're looking for the the, the cream of the crop there, uh, the conversations with Jed Collins and with Woody, you know, around growth and, and also about uh, how we grow money and, and use it as a resource. Those were some, some fun conversations. How about for yeah, you? The leadership Academy deal was a, was a great time. I did not think back on that when I, when I was putting together my thoughts, uh, number one recording from Dave Bowling's loft. That was just, Oh, that was a great time. Yeah, too. It's just a fun, fun interview. I hope that it came through when you listened, how much we enjoyed that and being with Dave. Uh, that was, that was great. And then uh, Zach meeting that cow. That was, that was a highlight. I was, I was still in my old office at that point. Just yeah. cow comes bebopping up and uh, Zach really brought us in. I think a lot of people have forgotten that Zach Scott used to be a regular part of this podcast. And yeah, Zach, took us, for Zach, a lot and of, Zach took us for a lot of walks in the greater Tampa area, including one time he was at a Publix, right? We were hoping he might be able to airmail us a, a pub sub. Chicken finger pub sub. That's right. Yeah. I, uh, I guess if I would have been thinking I could have brought Zach back in the fold for one last hurrah here, but maybe, maybe season three, maybe Zach will make his return, but a lot of a lot of good times to be had. Looking uh, looking back, I know you mentioned about half of them already. But uh, best interviews, favorite guests. No, no offense to anyone who doesn't get listed. I I should say that a lot of people with a lot of feelings out there. I don't want to offend anyone. But uh, who who have been some of your favorite conversations? Yeah, I, I really enjoyed the conversation with Bruce Melcher that we had at the Grand Council meeting. Another unique unique moment to hear some of the stories and challenges the organization and uh, you and I have been at times where we're asked to get in a car and drive to XYZ but for Bruce to drive from Miami to Canada that's quite the, that's quite the drive they would uh, probably allow you and I to fly it would be a different experience. I think so it would depend it would depend on the time of year yeah right but I feel like financially and both time commitment they probably now in these days so just story like that uh, you know, we had a great conversation with uh, Mark Romig and Eric Klo and Keon Pitts and, and TJ, mm -hmm. who's on our team. Uh, it, those were some phenomenal conversations, frankly, just educational and continue to shift perspective and make not just us, but I, I believe our listeners better. Uh, a great conversation with Ed Moy. That was one of my most entertaining because to listen to him talk about cryptocurrency, which obviously is incredibly relevant right now but also for you and him to go back and forth. I thought that was a, a very, very entertaining conversation. And then another one that I point out is the, the two doctors that we had on in, in a mm -hmm. focus around mental health. I just don't think if we, if we didn't have the Teak Nation podcast, I don't know that we would have come across those two frauders and frankly, being able to connect them with the organization and, and educate ourselves on mental health and things that, things that we can do because it is an area that has a stigma to it. And it's also an area that, I think for many of us, it's hard how you have that conversation between I just need to push through and I need to ask for help. Yeah, that's 
one of the things that we've been able to do with the podcast that's been exciting and unique and in it, it did happen in season one as well, but allowing us the opportunity to celebrate things like pride month, like black history month, like mental health awareness month, keeping, keeping uh, those, those pieces in the forefront for all of our members through social media, obviously, yes. And through some of the other marketing we do, but also having, having professionals, industry professionals on this show. And to me, it, it shows the vastness of the Teak Network. Having over 200,000 living alumni, I'm guessing there's not a career that you could think of that some member of this fraternity holds or has held. So when we think about season three and how we might be able to engage some people, I mean, is, are there is there an underwater welder that we want to bring in to talk about underwater welding? I bet there is, right? We're going to have to find him, but I bet we could do it. Is there a school teacher, right? I'm sure there's plenty of them. I'm Facebook friends with a few of them. There's all these different opportunities to connect them. There's and definitely school in. teachers, right? I mean, we're clear on that. There's definitely school teachers, school the, teachers underwater, the underwater right. welding group. I, I don't know if that demo, if we're hot in that demo with Antique. Well, there's got to be one. I mean, it's a sample size of 200,000. I understand that, but I, I don't know if you could just always say there's 200,000, so there has to be one. That that's a, It seems like a very niche industry, but I could be- That's a real career that. though, you know. I mean, there's pipes underwater that need to be fixed. Who's going to fix them? I don't disagree that it's a, that it's a field that exists. Oh, okay. I'm saying I don't, I don't, I'm not going to, I'm not going to commit that we have a teak in that field. You're saying that maybe those underwater welders went to trade school and we don't have any chapters at trade. We just weren't blessed enough to, to get one knowledge. of them to join our ranks. You, you're probably right. There probably is one somewhere. And yep. my luck, we'll get an email from about 10 of them. And hey, we've been waiting for you to finally give us a shout out. Yeah, they're listening to they're listening to the podcast on their waterproof headphones, you know, 25, 30 feet under in their scuba gear. Just They weren't going to self-identify until they finally got a shout out in this season in recap moment. I think too- when we talk about groups, there's a number of volunteers that we had, including Volunteer Appreciation Week. Yep. And we can never thank those folks enough for all the work they do to support the organization, both in terms of time, talent, and treasure. But so many people that you and I are blessed in this industry to have phenomenal relationships with that basically said, as a favor to us, they would come on and speak mm -hmm. to the organization and, and talk about uh, something that means so much to them. Yeah, the, the wide array of getting to talk to Andrew Hughes about climbing Mount Everest, and then the next week getting to talk to uh, uh, Thomas Geary and Pat McElroy about what it's like to be a, a boots on the ground volunteer for the fraternity, and then getting to talk to uh, Cole Connor about what the last year of his life as a college student looked like. It, it, it really, again, it just goes to that huge uh, spectrum of, of experiences that are taking place out there. When I think about my my favorite conversations, uh, Andrew, the, the two conversations we had with Andrew are, are probably at the top of my list just because that's such a, a unique experience to climb Mount Everest, something that I would venture a guess that there aren't many teaks out there who have done, um, who have done that. But to have him willing to talk to us literally from a tent halfway up that mountain and then to come down and, and talk to us again and share his experience was a highlight, not just for this podcast, but I think of my fraternity experience getting to connect.